Okay, from the economy, the Ghana Registered Midwives and Nurses Association says the UK government's red listing of Ghana will not stop health workers from leaving the country to see greener pastures. According to the UK government, Ghana is now among the list of 54 countries that should not be actively targeted for recruitment by health and social care employers. Thus, the General Secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association says will not stop what the UK government is trying to prevent brain drain the system of recruitment is different okay they have various means of recruiting health workers in uk you as an individual can mm. apply mm. to a health institution and you'll be taken on board and it's ongoing and it will continue because migration is a right there is no way they can stop anybody from coming to united kingdom to come and work so long as you have the requisite qualification it's just, it's just politics they can never stop it Look, by close of 2020, UK had lost about 40,000 healthcare workers. How are they going to replace that? So the recruitment process will go on. The WHO has a guideline on ethical recruitment. And that is what they are seeking to emphasize. But mm. it does not preclude them from continuing to employ our people. For instance, the Ministry of Health has an ongoing conversation to sign a bilateral agreement with the UK government to export nurses to the United Kingdom. Mm. That, I'm told, has not been put on hold. But don't let anybody delude himself into thinking that if UK is stopping nurses and midwives from coming to their country, then it means that uh, the attrition has stopped. No, there are various destinations. Austria has opened up, Germany has opened up. And what government must do is to be very intentional about putting in measures that will retain our people. We don't need to train and lose them. Okay. The good people of this country also deserve quality health care. Now, public relations officer of the Ministry of Health, Isaac Ofeba, says the health ministry has appealed the directive. He says discussions on a bilateral agreement with the UK government that will regulate the movement of Ghanaian health workers to the UK is ongoing. Let's... Uh, discuss this further and speak with Dr. Justice Youngson, his vice president of the Ghana Medical Association. I'm grateful for your time, Doc. I mean, recently we've had doctors caution government to improve their condition of service or lose them. Now we're hearing nurses also speak same language, even though the UK has uh, red listed us as countries uh, not to be considered for health and social uh, employments. Your initial reactions, Doc? Okay, good afternoon, Aisha. Uh, I think this is a very simple issue, but still complicated. One, the UK, per this release we are talking about, has not put a complete ban on recruitment of health professionals. They are looking at their interests and not ours. Yes, they will do what is ethical, but ultimately they will want to man up when it comes to the shortfall they have in their healthcare delivery system. Look, if you tell an agency not to recruit actively or to bear in mind that some countries are at risk, it does not necessarily mean that recruitment will not go on, visas will be issued, what have you. So the key thing for us is, as a state, what are we doing to preserve what we have, to contain and retain the professional that we have trained? The UK is also not the only country that recruits our professionals. For the last three to four decades, Ghanaian professionals have worked in the Middle East, they worked in Europe, not UK alone, but Europe as a broader continent. We are talking about North America, Canada, United States, and other places. So the opportunity for health professionals to migrate still abound. And what we need to do as a people is to put in the right measures that will help retain our professionals here, not to rely on some publications that a country says you are on a red list when it comes to recruitment, but there is no complete ban on such recruitment. 
individuals are still going there in droves. If an agency can send 100 people, and let's say for ethical reasons, they send 10, and the individuals on their own move, and you know you have 100, what have you done? There, 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 there's nothing different. So we just need to put our house in order, and that is the key thing. Mm. But how exactly should government handle this in trying to retain its own uh, health workers? Look, the push factors are well known to government. We as an association, we've documented, we've sent position papers. It didn't start today. This migration business is not something that is just one, two, three, four, five years old. No. It's been going on for decades. There are times we've put in interventions and it's helped, but those interventions have not been sustained. So as we speak, you just need to look at the push factors. If somebody has worked for, let's say, 10 to 15 years, and in real terms, his salary hasn't gone up in terms of the purchasing power, and he even thinks that he's retrogressing. So to make it simpler, let's say somebody started work 15 years ago, to 20 years ago with the equivalent of, say, $1,000 a month in Ghana. And if today, having worked for 20 years, probably become a senior person and all that, he cannot get that $1,000 equivalent. Technically, he's retrogressing because now he has a bigger family. He's married or she's married. She's got kids. She has to attend to elderly, you know, uh, members of the society and family and what have you. So clearly... The conditions under which we work in terms of your compensation is key. Yes, nobody is saying that the compensation can be matched in terms of what the UK will provide and yes. But if there is a deliberate effort to improve that, it will help. Other working conditions relating to the workplace, the opportunities for you to improve yourself, upgrade yourself, and all of those bits. The social protection mechanisms like healthcare for professionals and what have you. These are key opportunities to train and improve on your professional career and what have you. So until we begin to look at things properly, look, we will just play ostrich and the health professionals will keep living. One thing we also are losing track of is the fact that the migration is not only even about those moving out of the country. Intra-country, there's also migration from the health sector to other sectors. So you may have a nurse or a doctor or a pharmacist who may have been trained to practice, I mean, these uh, highly rated professions, but looking at the conditions under which they find themselves, they move out of the health sector and may be doing something in the world of business or farming or agriculture, wherever. And that in itself is also a big problem for us. And within the space, what is also worrying is that most of the people who are in more or less the middle to the top in terms of experience mm. are the ones who are even living in droves. And these days, they go and not settle all by themselves out there, but there's opportunity for their spouses and kids to also join them. So it's more like a whole family that is moving out. The spouse may not be a health professional, but will also be another professional who is equally, in quote, sought after either out there in Europe or America or wherever, or who should, under normal circumstances, be able to contribute to what we have as a country. So there's a lot we need to do, and the onus is now on the states. The Ministry of Health should tell all of us what they are doing. It is not lip service. We should be made to know and it should be implemented and it should be practical such that people will look at some of these things and say that well we'll consider what is happening because it improves our loss to an extent and stay otherwise once the golden fruits are being dangled at them people will leave i'm grateful for your time dr justice young says vice president of the ghana medical association